talk about what it takes to be a great engineer. Would you mind sharing some of those words of wisdom with our team? What it takes to be a great engineer. I think, first of all, it takes wanting to be a great engineer. And it starts when you're very young, because your personality is kind of set by the time you're maybe, you know, in college, somewhere in there, you know? And, but, you know, you get this attitude, oh my gosh, I want to, I have a hobby, I want to be really good at some goat food. And you force yourself, repetition is always helpful. Over and over and over and over, oh my gosh, you start getting so good, you think, my gosh, I'm not better than anybody I know. You know, and you start having those sort of feelings. So you should never give up this idea that you can be excellent, that what you're creating is going to be better than anybody else in the world can do. And it helps, and like I said, it helps across a lot of disciplines when I was working on my Projects. I was mainly an architect, guy, but I would do the, uh, you know, uh, thinking out the projects. Something totally different, never been done. Never copy a data sheet. Just, just fresh designs. Which chips? How to wire them? Draw it up on paper. Put it on the drafting board. Then move it on to plugging chips in a board, soldering every wire in place, testing it, fixing things, redoing. It's like every step of the way. And then when it needed, needed software, oh my gosh, I'll write a basic for it. You know. Now it doesn't matter. A lot of you think, oh my gosh, I'm not trained in some of these big tasks. Well, I never had a bit of training in any of the areas. Sure, I was a, a great student, and I taught myself how to design computers very fast. Never a bit of training in any of the things, the things that we did that made Apple big. Um, never a bit of microprocessor project before that. Although I worked with Hewlett Packard on the iPhone 4 of its day, the Hewlett Packard handheld calculators. I never, um, I never worked with dynamic RAM. I had to study the data sheets to see how does this dynamic RAM work. But it was the only solution to my goal. The end goal is what you, what you should define first. The end goal where you want to get, and then you should be able to build the building blocks to get there, write the book to yourself. You, you wind up doing a better job than people have done before. And it's okay to look at what's been done before, and can I use this particular part, this piece of code, or this piece of uh, this particular chip? That's okay, too, and, but you get a lot of ideas, but really work out the ideas on your own from the fresh, and you're, you're so much more proud of what you're doing. The code becomes a part of yourself, a representation of yourself. You want it to look so good and work so good when you show it to other people the tiniest little, you know, little aspect of the code, whether or not it applies much to the, the uh, benefit for the end user of the marketing agency. You feel proud about it, and that's what drives you to want to work harder. And you come up with, I, I wound up with my time. I was always working on projects I would have done on my spare time. It's like you couldn't pay me to do the sort of things I did. But I always loved it. It was just so fun to do that. And I just I must have worked, you know, 20 hours a, a day. I must have been dreaming it too. And I'd go to sleep with projects on my head, and wake up with solutions and write them down. And, and um, I don't know, it's just it's just like you, you have that much passion. You love what you're doing that much, and you want to show it off. It becomes a part of yourself. One example of that was when I laid out the PC board, I designed a floppy disk controller. Never worked with disks in my life. Never worked with operating system in my life, but I knew that if I designed a floppy disk in two weeks, and all the hardware working, and the software that we could type things like run checkbook, and it would run a program, I knew that I would get to go to Las Vegas, and I had never been to Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> we were in our young 20s when we started out, we had no, no money in bank accounts, no friends or relatives that could loan us any money, we had absolutely no business experience, no business classes in college, nothing. So, but oh my gosh, three people were going to go to Las Vegas with Apple to show off. They were going to allow personal computers into the consumer electronics show, and that's going to be three marketing guys. And I would never say, I want to, you know, let me go because I found the company. No. So I said, well, if I have a floppy disk in two weeks, can we show it? They said, yes. Oh, I'll bet you, you bet you the work you've got done on that. I just <laughs> created a way to make a floppy disk that turned out really great. But when I was done, there was the company that made our PC boards by then. We were coming up with cards for disk controllers, extra memory, other languages, little cards you plug into the computer with hardware on them. And, um, and I designed a lot of those cards, but the, I, I went to somebody and said, well, for my disk controller, where's the company that um, design, does our, plays out our PC boards now? They've got that big that we had other people do it for us. And somebody said, well, they're kind of busy on a bunch of projects. I wanted to work with them directly to make sure they put the chips in an ultimate location so they can absolutely be thought out in space for the shortest distance. When they're, you can put chips anywhere you want to, you have a million feed throughs and connections on a PC board, and it makes up, you know, you can just do that. I wanted it to be the super cleanest board ever, as I designed it. So the company was busy, so I went in at night, and I learned how to lay out some clear 
cellophane type stuff and all these little colored tapes and tape up the, the outlays of, of the integrated circuit chips where they would plug in all the holes the way you make PC ports. So I did it all manually by hand. And when I got done after about two weeks of spending every single night till about four in the morning, you know, the technicians would leave around two in the morning and we were kind of, we worked late at Apple back then. And I'd say, I'd always be the last one to leave and worked up so hard and after doing that for a while, I finished it. And then I looked at the drawing and I had five little holes you had to drill in the board to cross wires over from the top to the bottom, which was really incredible for that design. But, and I had eight holes. And then I saw that, oh my gosh, if I had only designed the ship register, to go from left to right instead of right to left. It would have all worked and I would have only had five holes. <laughs> so, what did I do? I came in for another week until four in the morning, undoing everything, changing the design and changing the layout just to make it that perfect. Nobody could ever see it. But that's, uh, you know, that's a good way to think about software, too. It doesn't matter as long as you know what's in there and how good it is. And perfect, clean, simple, short, short steps possible, you know, that you can do. Um, Wow.